In the last lecture, we saw the solution of four problems and the problems were based on properties of impulse signal. Now, in this lecture, we will solve two problems and again the problems are based on properties of impulse signal. The second problem is taken from GATE 2016 electrical paper. The two problems are not very difficult. You can easily solve them in very less time if you use the properties of impulse signal. Now let's start the solution of first problem. Here integration is given having the range minus infinity to infinity. Now if you remember the last lecture I told you whenever we are integrating the impulse signals we always focus on the range of integration because sometimes the impulse is outside the range of integration and in that scenario the integration will give us result equal to zero. For example if I make this range minus 1 to 1 then this impulse signal which is delta t minus 2 will be outside the range of integration and this term cos pi t delta t minus 2 will become 0. So this is one important point which we always check but as in this case the range of integration is minus infinity to infinity all the impulse signals will always included in this range. So there is no need to worry about the range of integration. We can directly follow the rules which we have seen till now. And if you see the second problem, in this case also the range is from minus infinity to infinity. So let's see how we can solve the first problem. We have cos pi t multiplied to delta t minus 2. So there is one impulse which is multiplied to cos pi t. Then we have weighted impulse 3 delta t plus 1. And the third term in this question is sine pi t delta 2t minus 1. So again impulse is multiplied to a signal sine pi t. I will open this bracket. I will open the bracket. And in that way I have integration minus infinity to infinity cos pi t delta t minus 2 dt plus integration minus infinity to infinity 3 delta t plus 1 dt plus integration minus infinity to infinity sine pi t delta 2t minus 1 dt. So this is what we have after opening this bracket. Now let's say, let's say this integration here is i1, this integration here is i2 and this integration here is i3 and we will solve i1, i2 and i3 separately. i1 is equal to integration minus infinity to infinity cos pi t multiplied with delta t minus 2 dt and by using the direct property the result we are going to get is x t1 where x is cos pi t and t1 is equal to 2. So we have cos pi multiplied by 2 so we have cos 2 pi cos 2 pi and cos 2 pi is equal to 1 so i1 is equal to 1 and now we will solve i2 integration minus infinity to infinity 3 delta t plus 1 3 is a constant so i will take it out so we have integration minus infinity to infinity delta t plus 1 and we already know integration of unit impulse signal is equal to 1. So this integration is equal to 1 and we have 3 as the value of i2. Now let's solve i3. The solution of i3 uses one extra property as compared to solution of i1. Here you can see 2 is multiplied to time. This means we are scaling the time. So we will use the property of time scaling first and then we will use this property. So we have integration minus infinity to infinity sine pi t and now we will take this 2 common so we have delta 2 inside the bracket t minus 1 by 2 dt and now from the property of time scaling we have integration minus infinity to infinity sine pi t will remain as it is sine pi t and we have 1 by mod 2 delta t minus 1 by 2. So this is what we have after using the property of time scaling. 
I am directly using the properties because we have discussed all the properties in detail and also we have used them in the previous lecture. So we have integration minus infinity to infinity sine pi t 1 by 2 delta t minus 1 by 2 and now by using this property we can see signal xt is equal to 1 by 2 sine pi t signal xt is equal to 1 by 2 sine pi t and t1 is equal to 1 by 2 the amount by which we are performing the time shifting so the direct result is x t1 or we can write sine pi 1 by 2 will be here 1 by 2 sine pi 1 by 2 so we have 1 by 2 sine pi by 2 sine pi by 2 is equal to 1 so finally we have 1 by 2 and this is the value of integration i3 now the total integration i the total integration i is equal to i1 plus i2 plus i3 i1 is equal to 1 i2 is equal to 3 and i3 is equal to 1 by 2 so we have 4.5 as our answer so in this way you can solve the question involving the integration in which one signal is multiplied to an impulse or we have integration of pure impulse signal now let's see how we can solve the problem number two the problem number two is having integration minus infinity to infinity e raised to power minus t delta 2t minus 2. Now this case is very much similar to the integration i3. Here we have time scaling and also we have signal e raised to power minus t. So we are multiplying this impulse to signal e raised to power minus t. The first thing you need to do is to take this two common and once you have this two common use the property of time scaling and after that you can use this property in which the final result will be xt1 so your task is to find out t1 and signal xt and in that way you will have the correct answer i will give this problem as homework problem because i think i have already explained enough problems related to these properties so this is your homework you need to find out the correct option out of four options given here and once you have your answer you may post your answer in the comment section now i will end this lecture here see you in the next one